Hello everyone, this is Terry Barnett with My Florida Regional MLS. And during this session, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the comparables page in IMAP. Maybe you're looking for the value of a property and you're either using this tool as one of your ways of going and doing a CMA, or maybe this is part of the culmination or the bringing together of several tools, either provided by the MLS or elsewhere, that you pull together to get a more accurate valuation of the property. Either way, this is how you would come up with your comparables in IMAP. So as you can see here on my screen, we have a property pulled up. We're going to say that we're, we're going to try to find the value of 2702 Tremont Drive in Eustis, Florida. So as you can see across the top line here, we do have several icons. And the primary one we're concerned about at the moment is the IMAP icon. Now if we use this icon, so we look a property up that's been listed before, we look it up in the MLS, we can pull this up in this fashion and click on the IMAP icon. This will take that property into IMAP as the subject property. Now we have other demonstrations where we show the detail page in IMAP, so we're not going to spend our time in this session on the detail page. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the right hand side and we're going to see that there is a comparable properties page. So whenever I click on the comparables property page, what you'll see is over on the left you'll see a summary of the subject property. You'll see on the map all of the comparables that were brought up by IMAP. One of my favorite sections over here on the left projected sales price. Now what I love about this is it gives me the figure two different ways. Sometimes these agree with each other, sometimes they don't, sometimes they're a little bit off, and in this case they're just slightly different. One by the value ratio and one by the price per square foot. So you can see we've got a range as low as 44.9, as high as 189, and then we have the price per square foot as low as 37.2 and as high as 186,000. You also have, over to the right of that, the statistics of the comparable properties. So you get the high, low, median, and average of sales price, living area, market value, dollar per square foot, and that market value ratio. We'll talk about that market value ratio a little bit more here because you might be wondering what the heck that is. Well, over here on the right, you have the different sections of the page. And if you're not sure what that market value ratio is, you can actually come over here to the right, click Explanation, if it's not already showing, and you'll have a little paragraph that gives you an explanation of the calculations. Now, why would I want to ever turn that on or off? Well, perhaps the reason you'd want to turn it on or off is because the customer might need to know what the market value ratio is. You might want to turn that off so that you become the expert. So by turning this off and you explaining that to the customer is a very valuable tool. As we scroll down the page, you'll actually see where we can do comparisons of the criteria. So these are the top items that the system is using to find the comparables that you see up above. So in this example, there's a lot size square foot plus or minus 50%. We can actually adjust that so we can make adjustments as close as 5%, as far out as 50, or we can even ignore. So you'll notice you do have the option to ignore certain fields. Building size is the same thing, building square feet. You can see you can go as close as 5, as far out as 25, and you have the choice of ignore. Then here is the distance from the property located within one mile. So I can actually go as close as a half a mile, as far out as 5 miles, or one of my favorites in the same subdivision. I tend to use subdivision first, and then if I can't get my comps that I need for, with subdivision, I move out to one mile. Now, does that mean that you should do it the same way? What you need to do is you need to, first of all, ask your broker, maybe take an appraiser to lunch, find out the right way to do it in your current marketplace, and then follow that. Okay, so I'm just sharing with you how I might use this simple tool. Over here to the right it says sold in the last year, so we can tighten that up. You can make it as close as three months, you can bring it out to six months, and in some cases where maybe you have a unique property, you could pull it out longer than that if you decided that that was necessary. Here you can see we have several fields that are being ignored, but you can put those in. We've got the year built, we've got the bedrooms and baths, so you can plus or minus the bedrooms and bath or have the same amount, and the waterfront. You can say whether you want to ignore the waterfront, not waterfront, or waterfront property, so you can match it up. And then you've got your stories, your garage, your pool. Then you get a choice of where you want to source your information. You can use the best available sales, 
tax source sales, MLS source sales, or just MLS active listings. So you get to choose which direction you want to go with that. Now, what should you use? Well, that depends on what you're trying to do with the information. As I scroll down, you'll also notice that you have a list of the comparables from the page. Now, if you wanted to decide whether you want to hold on to these or not, if you want to use those in your comparables, first you make your adjustments, update the criteria if need be. Notice right here, since I'm talking about that, updating the criteria, that you also have your set as default. So whenever you put in criteria, if you want to use it for the future, you can set that as the default. And then as we scroll down the page, whatever we updated it to would show up in this list. So we can choose to not include some of these comparables. Okay, now if you take something out, so I'm going to take two or three of these out, scroll down the page, and you'll notice that you do have them. They're still here. They're in grayed out. So you could put them back in if you decided that you wanted to. Okay, so what if we don't have enough information? What we can do, you can actually click on the blue text where the parcel ID is. You can click on that, and what you'll notice is you not only have the original list that you had, but you now have this this specific property, the one that you need a little bit more information about, so you can actually individually go into each property and decide whether they are comparable for your needs or not. All right, and like I said again, you do have the option to pull them back in if you change your mind or you made a mistake. Let's talk about some of the information that's in the comparable area here. You have the address of the property, the last sale, and the dollar per square foot at that time, the market value ratio, which you have the explanation of up above, the market value in dollar amount. You have that link that I just referred to where you could go into more detail about each property, the bedrooms, the baths, the distance from the property, lot, total area, living, year built, waterfront, garage, pool, and stories. So quite a bit of information. And then the only other little piece that I want to share with you at this point for this purpose would be the Realtor logo. Now what that means is that property was last sold through the MLS. Very simple, but it's good to know that you have a little icon that shows that that was an MLS sold property right there and available for you. Okay, and at that point, once you get your comparables all figured out, all set up, and you're comfortable with them, then you have the choice, as usual in IMAP, to email the page, save the page as a PDF, or print. And for the most part, IMAP, whenever you take it out of the system, email it, save it as a PDF, or print it, is it is a what you see is what you get program. So whatever you saw on your page is what you're going to see on your CMA that you print out, or your comparables page that you print out. All right, and keep in mind, if there is a section that you didn't want, you do have the option of that over here to the right, where you can turn on or off sections. The example that I gave you was the explanation field. You can turn that on, you can turn that off. All right, so that should be a fairly thorough explanation of the comparable properties page in IMAP. I hope this helped you out, and I hope this becomes a valuable tool in your toolbox. This is Terry Barnett with My Florida Regional MLS, signing off. Have a wonderful day.